Yo, what's going down, everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston. And today we have episode 17 of the Detroit Pistons Association. And first things first, once again, we're looking at traits. And this one is for Avery Bradley. And really, this is the main offer I'm looking at. It's Stucky, Yurebko, and CDR for Bradley and Paul Pierce. Now, this is just kind of an idea. Uh, this definitely is not the exact trade I would do, because I kind of like Jonas Yurebko, Dreb- or Jonas Yurebko, excuse me. And I don't really know if I want Paul Pierce's contract, although I have a feeling he might retire midway through that contract. But either way, I don't really like it. It's kind of expensive. And I don't really know where he would fit into our rotation. But uh, the, the whole point of this being, I'm looking at acquiring potentially, potentially, <laughs> excuse me, a lockdown defender of some sorts. I, I don't know about Avery Bradley because he's six foot two, which means I really couldn't put him on a guy like LeBron James. So he might struggle a little bit there in that aspect. But, you know, you get the idea. Um, you know, maybe Tabo Cephalosha, he's six foot seven, and, and the idea of this being that if Rodney Stuckey... I think I'm going to move on from Rodney Stuckey after this offseason. I'm not really too sure. He's, you know, he's at the point where he's peaked. He's probably not going anywhere. I'd like to get a guy back in Bradley who we can build around. And I know you guys are probably thinking, no, you got Shabazz Muhammad. Why do you want another shooting guard? Well, I think I want Shabazz Muhammad as my sixth man of the future. I want to have a very similar situation that the Thunder had in previous years, and even they still have now with Kevin Martin. But with a guy like James Harden off the bench, who not only can be the main scoring option in that second unit when they come off the bench, he can also dominate second unit shooting guards. But, he, you know, he, what I really think it's important to have a lockdown defender in the starting lineup. It gives kind of a defensive presence to start the game. You know, if you can get a guy like, I don't know, Kobe and miss, misses his first three shots, you know, maybe you can kind of get him off a little bit. And sometimes that can carry out throughout a game, at least in real life. I don't know how much about 2K, but like I said, I'm trying to make this as realistic as possible. Although, some of you guys have uh, been killing me in the comments lately about signing Dwight Howard. And I get that it's not the most realistic thing to do, but it's also my association, and I wanted to have fun with it. And I had the opportunity to sign Dwight Howard, and I don't think I was going to pass that up, to be quite honest. But, um... Yeah, honestly, there's nothing I can do about it at this point. If I trade him, it's going to be even more realist- unrealistic, so, you know, don't even bother about it in the comments anyway. But look at Greg Monroe running the break. I love Greg Monroe running the break. He does have finisher, so uh, he's very good at finishing around the rim. And now Chris Douglas Roberts has the ball driving in. I really, I, you know, I'm kind of fond of Chris Douglas Roberts. And uh, you can see he gives it to Cody Zeller for the mid-range. Not, not necessarily in real life, but in this game, he's, he's good. I mean, he's athletic. He can hit shots. He just signed with the Dallas Mavericks. In real life, I I can't remember. I think it was due to an injury. I'm not sure if he'll get cut soon, but I think like a Brandon Knight coming up and pulling the three. But yeah, back to my point. So I think I'll, I want to look at a lockdown defender. Um, as for the Harrison Barnes trade, uh, you know, a lot of you guys wanted Harrison Barnes. So I kind of, you know, I was playing around with both him and Parsons, seeing what both of them can and can't do. And it seems like Barnes is just a little bit of an upgrade. Really, you know, they're probably equal spot up shooters. Uh, maybe Parsons is a tad bit better. I'm sure it's because I know his shot a little bit more. I'm de- I could definitely learn Barnes's. Um, I was a little bit hit or miss with it when I was shooting around with him offline or whatever. Not offline, but, you know, out of the association. So it's a little bit hit or miss with it, but um, I think I could definitely learn it and be as good of a spot-up shooter as I was with Parsons. Uh, he does have the spot-up shooter signature skill. Both of them do, so... I just think Barnes is probably... Maybe not... A, a, I think Barnes has, at least in real life, a much better potential to be... A better, you know, not a lockdown defender, but just perimeter f- defender. And I think that Barnes also has the, m- has a much better ability to create his own shot. I also think he has a higher ceiling than Parsons does. But um, he also would be on a rookie contract for one year longer than Parsons would do. So that would benefit us financially. And like I said, you know, I don't mind giving up the first round pick. So I think I'm going to end up doing that deal. I really like Harrison Barnes. I'm going to be very excited about acquiring him. And like I said, if you guys have any ideas for lockdown defenders, a lot of you have said Iman Shumper in the past. I can definitely look at him. Uh, it's actually a very good idea. I should probably uh, go do that. Not right now, but anyway. Um, so I'll probably look at Iman Shumper. I'll probably do a whole, I might even do like a whole separate video and post it like on a Wednesday or something. Just as a, you know, a separate video or whatever. Doesn't It won't mess with the schedule, but just kind of going through trades, um, maybe doing some trades. Well, you know, just like a mid-season update or something like that. We might do something like that. I'm not really sure. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, let me know if you guys think the Avery Bradley deal is a good one. Um, I, I know I briefly mentioned it in the last commentary, but I want to more formally kind of talk about it in this one. And let me l- let me know if you have any good other lockdown defenders. Uh, I'm looking for guys with the lockdown defender signature skill. So, you know, if you guys have any ideas, uh, you know, I know Shumpert, Sevalosha. Uh, Shumpert's like 6'5", so he has decent height. I could definitely 
probably I could probably at least try to put him on a guy like uh, LeBron or Melo. I mean, I have to be careful because, you know, the 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 two biggest threats in the East, at least in real life this year, are the uh, the Knicks and the Heat. And both those guys have, or both those teams have two six foot eight small forwards. who I'm going to need guys who can defend. So. Uh, you know, I'll definitely need to do something about that. But Avery Bradley did a very good job covering D. Wade in the playoffs last year. Not in the playoffs because he didn't play in that series, but towards the end of the regular season when they had two or three matchups, I believe. And the Celtics won all three of those, I do believe. Mainly, I, I credit a lot of that to Avery Bradley and Kevin Garnett's defense on both D. Wade and Chris Posh, kind of isolating them and making uh, LeBron James kind of beat the Celtics instead of using some of his other weapons. But I'm getting, I'm getting on a tangent here. I'm talking about real-life basketball. It's not the point. So yeah, like I said, give me some names. Uh, Metarol piece is one he might be cheap to get. Uh, like I said, if I go to Metarol piece, I think I'd rather go to Tabo Stefalosha. But anyway, we'll see. So let's get into the game. But here we're up 74-61. Absolutely blowing out the Indiana Pacers. Although the Pacers are going to win the competition for ugliest throwbacks in this jersey. Or in this jersey, in this game. But uh, look at Greg Monroe in the mid-range that I was very excited about when he hit that. Because uh, it's definitely something I want to expand with. I want Greg Monroe to be a little bit better of a face-up shooter, a little pick-and-pop option, but um, either way, he's getting the and one there. He has that hustle point signature skill, so when he gets offensive rebounds, he gets a plus five to a bunch of his attributes, and uh, he oftentimes will convert those and ones or get fouled or something like that, but that's good to see. Gerald Green getting the nice layup there, but uh, yeah, so we uh, both wore some throwbacks this game, and the Pacers had some ugly ones on, but... Anyway, this is a battle for first place, so both, I believe the Pacers were a half game or a full game back of us coming into this game, and if they won, you know, we're at the point in February, I, I believe uh, early February, maybe late, I think we're late January actually, yeah, like the very end of January, and uh, you know, those division matchups are going to become pretty important, uh, you win the division, you get a top four seed, so um, you know, definitely going to need that, if you guys don't know how the playoffs work, so the uh, top four seeds consist of the three divisional leaders, and the, you know, team with the best record outside of the division leaders, and then, you know, basically gets sorted through there in terms of best record. So, you know, for example, the uh, Celtics, I believe, were the division winners of the Atlantic, but didn't have as good of a record as the Atlanta Hawks. So they were the, uh, actually ended up, <clears throat> even though they were the four seed technically, they had to secede, not secede, you know, seed, I should say, home court advantage to the Hawks in that first round series, but it ended up not mattering. But, um, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how the playoffs work. I I'm pretty sure. And uh, unless they change it this year. So, you know, getting get, winning the division would be very important for the playoffs. I think this is a team that has a potential to make a run of the playoffs. I don't know if they will. Very young. I believe Dwight Howard's the only person with playoff experience on this roster. Uh, I don't think Chris Douglas Roberts has playoff experience. And other than that, most of these guys have been either career Pistons or, you know, Chandler Parsons was a rocket. And, uh, yeah, the rest of these guys are pretty much all Pistons or just rookies or whatever. But, um, either way, Isaiah Cannon, man, he had a great game. Yeah, he ended up going 6 of 7 from the field. I think he ended up with 14 points, 1 rebound, 1 assist. He had a really good game. Him and Booby Gibson, or Daniel Gibson, I call him Booby. That's what most people call him. But, uh, they really were battling back and forth towards the end of this game. But you can see the block party there. We had, uh, that, that's the trophy you get for getting 10 team blocks. I ended up at 12 this game. So you'll see towards the end of the uh, game, but yeah, Isaiah Cannon is a guy I've thought about trading in the past, but he's such a good scorer, it, it'd be hard to, I think, you know, we can develop him a little bit, maybe just, I mean, you know, he's never going to be anything more than a role player for us, but, you know, you'll, we'll see, I mean, it'd be nice to see what he can do, but look at uh, George Hill getting the inbound steal, George Hill had a pretty good game this game, he's going to end up with 10 points and 13 assists, so, solid game for him. But you can see we're up 18, Gerald Wallace is going to end up missing, not Gerald Wallace, Gerald Green is going to end up missing that layup. And uh, some of you guys were killing me in the comments because I uh, sometimes they mix up things. I'll say like some guy's name wrong, or uh, you know, and you guys kill me in it. But uh, just me, you don't have to worry. I mean, I I, I thank you. I, I'll thank you guys for pointing it out or whatever. It's like if I don't know a guy's name and I mispronounce it or something. But you don't have to kill me every time. You know what I mean? But it's whatever. So we ended up winning this game 117 to 96. Very good performance by our team. I was very happy. Uh, you know, setting a, setting a, or putting a statement out there that we are, or we should at least be able to win this division. It's pretty much a three-team race, us, the Pacers, and the Bulls, so it's going to be a very good, you know, race towards the end. And you see we end up winning 117-96, beat them in a lot of categories. As I said, 12 blocks, made 11 threes on, out of 21, so very good three-point shooting night. That really carried us 
You can see these stats there for the Pacers. Danny Granger did end up with 28 points. That was nice to see for them. CJ McCollum, the rookie there, didn't do anything too much. We were able to uh, hold him. And you can see our stats. Rodney Stuckey with 27, Monroe at 20 and 11. And other than that, pretty solid performances from guys like Knight, Cannon, Howard, Parsons, even Zeller. But anyway, let's kind of wrap this video. So I thank guests for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And so I'm out. Peace.